Good evening and welcome to the Labour Party annual conference here at the INEC Convention Centre in Killarney. In a few minutes' time, Joan Burton will begin her first televised address to a Labour conference since taking over as leader and Thonister seven months ago. At the podium, as you join us, Environment Minister Alan Kelly is making the speech of introduction. economic decision in the history of this state to bail out the banks. And in government, she has absolutely transformed her department and been an absolute groundbreaking minister for social protection. By protecting, protecting core social welfare rates, she has achieved something unique for a country who found ourselves in this position by the previous administrations. Putting opportunity for everyone at the centre of her work is her team. And when I say everyone, colleagues, I mean everyone, man and woman, young and old, rich and poor, gay and straight, urban and rural. She has been a figurehead, an absolute figurehead for women in this country. And do you know something? She has the human touch. Few politicians are known simply by their first name. Well, we are lucky to have one of them leading the revitalisation of our great party, the Labour Party. I am proud to introduce you to, the, to her this evening. Please welcome the Minister for Social Protection, the first female leader of the Labour Party, Antonishta Joan Burton. Joan Burton entering the hall at the beginning of a year, or just about a year, of campaigning towards the next general election. And of course, many minds here of delegates focused on Labour's continuing low poll ratings, which if repeated in a general election would see many TDs losing their seats. But there have also been many other issues debated here today. Housing, high rents, some mention of water, and there has been a protest by water and well, anti-water campaigners during the day. Also the marriage referendum, which will be one of the key issues to be addressed in Joan Burton's speech. Good evening, friends. It's a huge honour for me to stand in the footprints of the great leaders who gave heart and soul to this party. Men like Dick Spring and Eamon Gilmore, whose commitment to Ireland's cause was absolute, whose character was resolute, and whose dedication to labour values was beyond dispute. Values shaped so much by the women of our party. So I take particular pride standing here as the first woman leader of the Labour Party. We stand here tonight as spring takes hold throughout the country and right now we are witnessing an economic spring too. Students being recruited straight out of college. Last week hundreds were hired at Career Zoo. Apprentices being snapped up. This week in Port Leash I met the first of 300 new apprentices being recruited by the ESB. The next generation of talented craftsmen and craftswomen powering the company that powers our country. We're building the economic recovery and with it new jobs and opportunities for all our people. Unemployment will shortly fall below 10% for the first time since the economic crisis. Over 90,000 new jobs have been created, 40,000 more are on the way this year. Wages have increased by more than 2% over the past year. Contrast this hopeful spring with the economic winter when we took office. When fear was rampant, 
fear for Ireland's future, for the future of our sons and our daughters, our family and friends. We've conquered that fear and replaced it with hope. But a country is more than its economy alone. It's a society too. So the true measure of our success will be delivering a social recovery alongside the economic one. Meaning every person, every family and every community benefits from renewed prosperity. That is our challenge, to live up to what we are, what we have always been. The Labour Party is the party of work and we're getting Ireland back to work. <laughs> the Labour Party is the party of opportunity and we're now creating opportunity. I know something about the importance of opportunities in life. My adopted parents, Bridie and John, had little money, but lots of love, lots of encouragement, and above all, lots of belief in opportunity. They knew the key to opportunity was education. I went to UCD on a scholarship. My parents could, they could never have afforded the fees. That scholarship was there to give people of my working class background opportunities in life. I joined the Labour Party because it believed opportunity is what allows us, as Jim Larkin said, to close the gap between what ought to be and what is. We in the Labour Party... In the Labour Party, we do not measure success just by balanced budgets or bond yields. We measure success by the progress of our people, by the jobs they have and the quality of life those jobs offer, by the sight of communities prospering and children thriving. It doesn't matter much to me that we get approval for Ireland's recovery from boardrooms or rating agencies. It matters everything to me that we get the approval of the people. And for that, people must see the fruits of recovery in their lives. That's what we're fighting for now, a shared recovery, the common good, a decade of opportunity for all. Now, there are progress deniers out there. Some of them hijack peaceful protests to make their point. In a free society, in a free republic, that's bullying. The Labour Party... <laughs> the Labour Party, we have a long, long history of standing up to bullies. And I'll tell you something else. Labour women were not easily intimidated. And nothing, nothing. <laughs> nothing will stop me from leading the drive to rescue our country after Fianna Fáil pushed it over a cliff. Our progress has been such that we'll eliminate the deficit in this government's second term. We'll balance the books as part of our long-term plan to bed down the recovery. What does that mean? It means, firstly, no return to crisis, not on our watch. It 
It means, secondly, more money for essential public services, for schools, for hospitals, and homes for families. We'll do it because tax revenues are strong. That's what happens when you get people back to work. Every taxpayer has more money in their pay packet because of the tax reductions in the budget. Pensioners, people with disabilities, people living alone, they've all received a Christmas bonus. This is the Labour Party living up to our standards and this is Labour in action. The Labour Party is in government to ensure economic strength goes hand in hand with social justice. That opportunity and prosperity go hand in hand with fairness and equality. That workers and businesses are helped to get ahead. That families are helped to get on rather than just get by. And that we reach full employment deliver a fair and equitable tax system for workers and affordable homes for families to live in. That's why we are in government. In the coming year, we'll continue to push back poverty. Poverty has always been our enemy and the best protector against poverty is a job. We're building an economy that works and because of the progress we've made, we'll reach full employment by 2018. <laughs> A productive economy with full employment means that people have the opportunities to reach their full potential a fair wage and decent working conditions are essential to that. This means tackling low pay and zero hour contracts. Yeah. Because workers, workers are entitled to a living wage rather than dreading the arrival of every bill. The first thing we did in government was raise the minimum wage after Fianna Fáil had cut it. And just this week, we launched the Low Pay Commission to examine the minimum wage every year. And if they recommend an increase, I can tell conference here and now we will increase it. The Low Pay Commission started work this week and is due to report Fianna in Fall July. introduced the universal social charge. Its effect on low income workers were savage. Labour and government has freed 410,000 low income workers from USC. In the budget, that will go to half a million. Half a million. <laughs> half a million low income workers freed from USC completely. And we will continue to reform it for middle income workers to make sure that the teacher or the Tyler, earning, say, 35,000 a year, continues to see their universal social charge come down. <laughs> Helping small and medium businesses to prosper, it's central to what we do. That's why Labour's strategic bank is open for business with an initial 400 million to lend to those businesses. We're also providing the
the fast broadband so crucial to businesses in rural areas. Electricity transformed rural communities in the 20th century and broadband will create jobs, opportunity and prosperity for rural communities in the 21st century. <laughs> Businesses and families are slowly beginning to recover from the effects of the crisis. We must do everything we can to speed up that progress. Having already increased child benefit, we'll do so again at the next budget. By the end of this year, we'll set out the steps that will enable us to introduce two weeks paid paternity leave. And that's so that new mums and dads can both afford to spend precious time with their new baby. Yeah. Mums and dads... <laughs> mums and dads will also be able to bring their young children to the doctor for free because this year we'll deliver another of our core commitments to provide free GP care for children under six. <laughs> Child care is another concern for families. We are increasing access to subsidised child care and after school places. But that won't be enough and we must do more. I want to ensure that before they start primary school, every child has a right to two years of free preschool. <laughs> this will be a key, plat a key uh, plank of our election platform. Families also need the certainty of a roof over their heads. Building a social recovery means sufficient homes for people to live in. We'll start by delivering tens of thousands of new affordable homes for, work, for working families through the Construction 2020 strategy. And at the same time, we'll pump in a record 4 billion to provide 35,000 social houses by 2020. And to provide the essential social services that people need, we're hiring more Gardaí, more teachers and more nurses. 300 new Garda recruits are now in training in Templemore. In health, we're hiring more staff on the front line. In education, we've just had the best reading and maths results in our primary schools in three decades. We're hiring 1,400 more teachers and 350 special needs assistants. To an To ensure that all our children get the best possible education and have every opportunity to reach their full potential. Dealing with our debt has been horrifically difficult. We tore up the toxic promissory note, we renegotiated our interest rates, we fought for changes that have saved us tens of billions of euro. And here's the good news, we can now borrow money for less than 1%.
that's, that's actually an amazing turnaround. We've eased our debt burden by being smart, tough and flexible. And we'll also make the right decision in maximising the return on our, on our stake in AIB. Labour opposed the bank guarantee because we knew how disastrous it would be. And boy, was it disastrous. But on taking office, the banks became our problem to fix, and we're fixing them. And it's only right that the people share in any benefits that flow from selling them. In other words, a social dividend. A measure of fairness for the massive injustice inflicted on us all. The Labour Party is all about equality. I want to see an Irish society that's equal. And this means that all citizens are treated equally under our constitution. Some time back, driving to Limerick for work, I stopped at the Obama Plaza in Moneygall. And a woman in a yellow coat approached me, wanting to talk about the marriage referendum. I told her what I thought, and uh, I stood back slightly, because I thought she was going to be critical. Instead, she told me about her beloved son, her beloved gay son, and her desire that he have the right to marry and settle down. She wanted what every Irish mammy wants for their child. And, you know, we were both a bit emotional. Tears welled up. As I realized, we're, we're fighting for more than just two people in a loving relationship. We're fighting for everybody who loves them in turn. And we'll win. <laughs> and we, we'll win by making conversation and making our case face to face, one person at a time, to ensure equality of love before the law. And a socially just society, that's our goal. It's going to take passion, commitment, dogged hard work, and time. Central to this is a basic reality. You cannot solve big issues with small politics. In 2011, this party took our responsibility seriously. We put our country first and entered government. Some say we made a mistake, that we should have stayed out in our own interest to advance the party's cause. Those people do not understand this party and they never will. We put Ireland first, and we always will. In highly unstable economic times, politicians have a critical role to provide political stability. We have provided that stability, and the country is recovering. As we approach election 2016, contrast this with the chaos on the opposition benches. Fianna Fáil won't enter government with Sinn Féin or Fine Gael. 
Sinn Féin won't enter government with either of them. The independents can't govern themselves. <laughs> and um, the hard left, they're opposed to governing. So it's a coalition of chaos and the country simply cannot afford it. Contrast, this government ended the chaos of the economic crisis. We converted fear into hope and an economy built on quicksand into one built on solid and sustainable foundations. It hasn't been easy. Labour and Fine Gael see individual issues in different ways, sometimes very, very different ways. But what we share is a desire to secure the recovery and to spread its benefits. And we work together, the Taoiseach and I, to make that happen. Next year, we will celebrate the centenary of the 1916 Rising. We will look back and look forward at the country we have become and at the country we can become. The 1916 Proclamation envisaged a republic of equal rights, equal opportunities and prosperity for all. The depth and scale of the economic crisis struck a blow to that vision. Ireland has been through immense turbulence this past seven years, but we've come out on the right side and we're perfectly placed to deliver a decade of opportunity. The economic recovery is underway now we're building the social recovery. As Labour Party leader, I'm fighting for a strong economy and a society that's just. The opportunity is there for us to achieve both. The cranes, they're on the skyline again. The jobs are emerging again. A generation stands ready to come home to a republic of equality, of opportunity, of hopes and dreams and possibilities. Let's deliver for them. Let's deliver for all of them. And let's deliver the decade of opportunity. And that ends at the end of the party leader's speech on the Thomas speech, Joan Burton. That ends our live coverage of the Labour Party conference. The news is next from Cahal McCulloch here in Killarney. Good evening.